tonight uh, I did uh, some uh, interesting job. I decided to change my presentation and uh, make it very practical. So everything what you will uh, see today uh, based it on uh, something what we have uh, inside uh, our office and um, um, and probably in the second part of my talk I will speak about future and why we're doing this. So uh, four years ago uh, we started to create our own SLAM uh, and for now probably we have the most uh, mature technology on the market probably because that is why I'm speaking here. Uh, so we have a uh, full stack of technology. So we have uh, tracking, mapping, we using a stereo camera or we can work with a single camera. Fisheye, we have sensor fusion and it's very fast. So for example, on iPhone 7, we have 120 frames per second or on a Raspberry Pi 3, we have uh, 40, 47 frames per second. Uh, I will show you two like three samples of uh, mapping what you can uh, see in our office. Uh, so first it's for AR glasses or let's say uh, uh, mobile phones. So this is a sample when you just uh, using a single camera, uh, you can map environment in real time. And as a result, you can, you can have a point cloud. Uh, so we can understand depth from, uh, from the motion. Second case, uh, it's, uh, we have a vacuum cleaner, and this vacuum cleaner uh, mapping, uh, mapping environment uh, by itself. And you, see, you can see here a sample, and the third case, it's outdoor. So we have uh, our technology works outdoor, so our, our SLAM works outdoor. So we can create a, a map, plus you can, you can see, have a odometry, visual odometry uh, outdoor. Um, as a result, for example, on iPhone 7, uh, can you please launch video? Yeah, uh, you can uh, have uh, such kind of, I don't know, Pokemon Go. Uh, and uh, it's very fast. So we have, uh, again, we have on iPhone uh, 6, we have like about 65 frames per second. On iPhone 7, we have 120. So we can, f first you can prim up environment, and then you can, you can put some content, what you need uh, in this environment. Uh, autonomous navigation. Uh, this is a sample when you can, uh, so uh, first uh, vacuum cleaner create a map of, of the environment, and after that you can set up a wave point to program uh, uh, how uh, vacuum cleaner have to drive it in your home. So this is a process uh, of uh, programming, you just set up wave points on a map, and then you ju need just uh, press uh, button go, and uh, this is a pass, so this is a plan of uh, how, uh, how a vacuum cleaner have to drive. And this is a result, uh, it's uh, driving fully autonomously uh, and uh, just using a single camera. But again, we can, uh, we can work with a stereo camera too. We have SLAM what working on a both, uh, both visual cameras. Yeah, it's uh, some movements, but we're not a... Uh, uh, specialist in in the uh, in the uh, control systems. Uh, next is a drone. So we have a drone flying on base of SLAM. Uh, can you please launch video too? Yeah. So the drone flying according to pass what uh, you programmed it for. This video uh, recorded like a year ago, and the drone uh, has a Raspberry Pi two. Uh, so which is very uh, low level CPU and single camera like Raspberry Pi camera. Yeah, I think we are. It's enough. We have also inside out tracking, but I cannot disclose some to, to uh, I cannot disclose information about it. Uh, and we have some actual demos in the office. So everyone can just come to me, sign NDA, and you can try our, our inside out tracking. Um, uh, we have also working on some models, but we are software company, so but we licensing, we actually we plan to um, uh, release some 
uh, big announcement during Augmented World Expo with some big guys that we're partnering uh, about, but uh, we decided to do this next week. So next week we'll announce some very big partnership uh, about uh, creation of stereo and uh, mono uh, models for autonomous navigations. And these models provide you uh, six DOF plus point cloud uh, with 65 frames per second. It's running on a, inside it has Raspberry Pi, but this is the prototypes. Uh, actual models like four times smaller and hell CPU on a board. Uh, so we're working with all these platforms. Um, and plus we're building our own infrastructure for mapping. So you can uh, upload maps, you can update maps, etc. This is very important uh, because uh, I think what uh, slam-based maps, so point cloud is the next step after Google Maps. And uh, since you have very accurate maps indoor, you can create a lot of much more services than you can. And uh, uh, this is a kind of world what we're building. So you have uh, slam and, and mapping on all these devices, and these devices like uh, uh, interact with each other real time. R&D. I think for the industry and for, um, for slam and point cloud, now it's very important analytics. A lot of companies working now to create uh, like collision avoidance, good, good solutions, uh, segmentation, classification through the semantics. It's very important to achieve very organic uh, interaction between a human and a robot. So, for example, you can say to a robot, hey, uh, drive to kitchen and take my beer to me. And a robot have to understand this from a semantic of a map. Um, also, I think important uh, to measure uh, indoor maps and outdoor maps. Since you have uh, like maps uh, uh, and you understand the coordination and relation between indoor and outdoor, you can do a lot of services like uh, delivery, uh, like inspections, etc. And I know some companies working. This is very important for industry. Next slide. Uh, a lot of things to do to create good interfaces. So because uh, you can have a good mapping, you can have good point cloud, good analytics, but you need to create very, and you need to rethink uh, 3D interfaces, how human interact with robots, how human give instruction to a robot, and how they uh, give information back. It's not a uh, 2D world, it's uh, something what a lot of designers, and we have some, I have very good experience in this, uh, so it's, it's a different world. It, we need to rethink everything about this. Future, so why are we doing this? So why we, uh, why three years ago or four years ago we started to create Owen Slam and we started to create infrastructure for this. Uh, first, uh, I believe who in augmented reality more than five years, I, I believe a lot of people remember this photo with uh, Sergey Brin in, in uh, Google Glasses in uh, somewhere in New York. And I think three years ago most of our people not uh, sure what Google Glasses will be used daily. Uh, but uh, now since everyone tried HoloLens, I think everybody understands what HoloLens could be a new iPhone in two, three years. And uh, SLAM 3D mapping is the core technology for this. If you don't have a SLAM, you don't have uh, mapping, you cannot build the uh, HoloLens. And now uh, all companies after Apple, Google, and probably Oculus are fighting for SLAM solutions because they don't have a SLAM and they cannot build a new iPhone in two, three years. So uh, that is why it's a lot of competition for who will create a solution for this. So I think this guy was a little bit earlier, three years ago, but in two years uh, we will see this picture everywhere. It will be some new, maybe new whole, um, some a little bit different device, but we will, we will, we will use uh, whole like uh, AR glasses instead of our phones. Autonomous cars, trucks, all this, uh, Devices based on uh, more precise maps, based created with LiDAR, etc. So core technology is a SLAM and core technology is 3D maps too. Autonomous drones, again, in our office we have full autonomous drone flying like without any assistance. It's delivery, etc. And uh, you can achieve accuracy only with a SLAM. Uh, agriculture, you can see a lot of cases where an agriculture need uh, visual based uh, navigation. Construction. And warehousing, like Amazon acquired Kiva, and uh, they use Slam for for indoor navigation. This is a critical technology for this. Uh, conclusion. Uh, first, uh, I think Slam. We using Slam now because we cannot use GPS. And accuracy of GPS 
is limited. So we need slam, uh, we need slam and, and maps with accuracy like centimeters, and we can uh, create a lot of services indoor. Second, I think since uh, we will have more and more devices with slam on board, uh, this will change behavior of humans. So it will change a lot of templates what people like this change daily behavior of a human. Um, and this will help uh, to business to create a lot of new services, like significantly new services. Uh, and you can see uh, how it's happened before on, a on the base of Google Maps. People create, put some, I don't know, some points, some restaurants, give some feedbacks, etc. Since we will have uh, very accurate indoor maps, it will be possible to create like totally buy much more services. Uh, and I think as a result, uh, these accurate uh, maps uh, allow us to create um, like new and accumulate uh, much more knowledge than we have now. Since we have more knowledge, we can create much more uh, services. And these services in total, will, is in, in terms of values, and they will increase value of services based on Google Maps. That is why we, again, started four years ago to do SLAM. And this is why we, we have a lot of interest now. Um, thank you very much. You can uh, contact me after my presentation. I hope I'm not delayed my presentation. And uh, yeah, and probably, yeah, I have a couple of minutes. OK, because I'm not uh, following, because I don't have a timer here. Yeah, if someone uh, have a question now, please ask. I'm, re I'm ready to answer, or we can speak after my presentation. Thank you. Yeah. When you want to do tracking for head-mounted head uh, displays, uh, often uh, people will have pure rotations when they move their head around. Um, this is difficult for structure for motion systems. Can be alleviated with stereo cameras. Uh, are you taking this into account in your product? Uh, yeah, we have. Um so uh, we have not only uh, visual slam, we do sensor fusion, and all these movements, like critical movements, uh, we so for this we we, we fuse with uh, gyroscope accelerometer. It's a very critical problem for because uh, so if we're talking about our like part of work of our slam, for example, on a very low level CPU, we achieving six milliseconds of latency. So uh, it's, it's very more than enough for this kind of uh, AR displays. Uh, and the second problem is the accuracy. So like open loop, so you need to have very good uh, accuracy uh, of tracking because you don't like when it's jumping. So we, we have very interesting uh, solutions and you can try in our office. It's, it's working, yeah. More questions? Okay, because I know what like uh, maybe uh, one sort of auditory, uh, I know one sort of auditory, and we are under NDA with, with one sort of, of auditory. So probably <laughs> I will be able to speak later about this. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope next speaker will be speak. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to interject myself into a slide story there. That picture of, of Sergey yeah. wearing, wearing Google Glass on the New York subway, that photo was taken by Noah Zirkin. Okay. He was working on like data glove research for NASA out of an office in New York hospital. And we had lunch that day, mm -hmm. lunch with Noah, walked him to the subway on the way back to the office. And he texts me and he's like, I just saw Sergey on the New York subway <laughs> wearing Google Glass. I was the first person in the world to see that photo. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, but I think in two years we will see a lot of people like Sergey Brin, which is amazing. Yeah, you can. Yeah. But but three years ago it was most of our people. It's not really happened. Yeah, nice story. <laughs> Thank you.